Welcome back to Red Dead Redemption 2. Today we're going to be discussing everything Bounty. We're going to be showing you exactly how Bounty works in this game, how to avoid getting a Bounty, and how to rob stores without getting a Bounty on your head. I hope you all enjoy this episode. If you do and you feel like doing me a kindness, don't forget to show your support and smash that like button. It really helps out. But we're going to go ahead and uh, commit a little bit of a robbery here in Rhodes. And we're going to explain how we get away with it. Now, we want to make sure we have our horse pointed in the direction that we can quickly escape in. Now, we're not going to put our mask in until we're either walking through the door or until we're inside. I like to do it once we get inside. That way, none of the people outside are freaking out about your presence. Because at this point in time, they don't recognize who you are anyways. Once we have the mask on, we're going to go ahead and go up to the register and rob it. Now. Now, with some cases, they may have a weapon on them, and they may very well retaliate with that weapon, causing a disturbance outside. But in this particular case, we do have people running for the hills, and they did report... They haven't reported the crime yet, but they are a witness to the crime going on. Now, they don't necessarily know who we are, so they can't tell the cops who we are currently. So as long as you get out of this particular area before any of the cops see you, you will be able to get away with this without receiving any kind of bounty. Now we're gonna go ahead and get out of the area as quick as possible and then wait for this wanted to go away. As you see, they are currently investigating to see what happened. And at this point in time, if you are spotted by any of the cops hunting you down, not necessarily these civilians, but the cops themselves, you will instantly get a bounty. So you wanna get as far away as possible and then wait out the wanted and then you'll be fine to go back. We're gonna turn around here and we're gonna be able to see the cops running in the hills on the top right corner but they're so far away, they're not gonna be able to see where we are. Now we are really far out thanks to our super awesome Black Arabian, and we can actually head right back into town and rob it again. This process is so effective, you can rob a town multiple times and then move on to another one. Now we are going to explain exactly how the bounty system works and why I'm currently switching outfits. When you switch outfits, it makes it harder for the citizens to recognize you. Now cops themselves can recognize you no matter what, even if you have a mask on, the key is making sure the citizens don't recognize you so that way they can't report you right off the bat this gives you a little bit of time to escape the area before the cops actually come and recognize who you are so we're going to show this in effect right now we're actually greeting the cops that were just looking for us we're riding back into roads and we're going to go immediately rob the gunsmith wearing a different set of clothes now if you really want to take this to the next level you would use a different horse and even change your hair and beard styles to basically make yourself even more unidentifiable. In certain instances, if there's nobody around the current area, I'll put my mask on before I go in, but traditionally, I like to try and prevent the masses from freaking out as much as possible. Now, this particular guy will pull a gun on us when we go to do this, but thankfully, there's nobody immediately nearby, and as long as we cold cock him quick enough, we'll actually be able to rob the register and still get out of here before the cops come. So we're trying to rob him right now. He pulls the gun and there was a gunshot there, but somehow we're still able to rob the register here. Now, we don't have any witnesses currently, but let's go ahead and rob this register. Thankfully, the cops are still out looking for me, but we need to run out of here as quick as possible. Now, I'm going to take the mask off before I go out because the cops will get super butthurt and there is no witness currently to this crime. So I want to make sure when I walk out, everything looks normal. If you leave with a mask on, People are going to freak out. And as you see, I accidentally left my mask on. And that made them freak out. And there was a witness to the murder. But the witness doesn't know who I am. So they reported that there is a crime in the area. But since they didn't know I was Arthur Morgan, they can't actually post the bounty until they physically see me. Now we're going to go ahead and speed this up just so we can showcase that once the wanted level drops, we can go ahead and open our map 
and we'll see that we do not have a bounty at all. Now let's go ahead and discuss the wanted loop. There is a lot to this, but once you understand the process, you'll be able to commit crimes a lot more effectively in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now we're gonna go ahead and put our bandana on as we get into here. We're in a new outfit and nobody should recognize us. Now we're gonna go ahead and commit the crime. Now we are in a very populated area with big open windows. So once we get this cash register opened, most likely there's going to be a witness to this crime. Now, there are three types of witnesses. Well, technically two, but three different colors for the witnesses. Right now, that is the color of a witness who doesn't know we are Arthur Morgan. So the cops are going to have to come in, investigate, and they need to identify us for us to actually receive the bounty. So you see they come in, but they don't directly see us yet. He will notice us here in just a second, and once he does, they will automatically always identify you as Arthur Morgan if law enforcement actually sees you. And at that time, you will get a bounty. Now, as I mentioned, there are three types of witnesses. Those that are character witnesses to the scene, they're going to appear up on the map as white. They know something's gone down, but they don't know what the person looks like at all. Then there's the witnesses that have seen the crime go down, but still don't know exactly who it is. And then there's this type here, which is a very bright red, which means they know exactly who you are and if they get to report the crime you're going to instantly have a bounty and those are the types of witnesses that you want to try and stop although if there's a bunch of them obviously you just need to book it from the area wait for the wanted to go down and then go pay off your bounty now the icons for witnesses then don't exactly know who you are but are going to report a crime is a little bit strange. The uh, witness icons are supposed to be a dark red if they don't exactly recognize who you are, but we do have a mask on here. And when we run away, we're gonna see that the crime has been reported, but they still don't recognize us. At this point in time, the cops do pop up the dark red that the witnesses are supposed to. And when we hit that guy, it pops up dark red as it's supposed to as well. So that's a clear indicator right there that nobody knows who we are. So as long as we escape and are not exactly targeted targeted by the lawmen, then we'll be able to get away with the crime and not get a bounty. So it looks like the witness icons are a little broken, but all in all, the system does work if things are done correctly. Now this brings us into how witnesses recognize you and what you can do to prevent it. A witness will instantly recognize you if you commit a crime without a mask on and you will instantly have a bounty on your head once it is reported. Now, if you have a bounty on your head recently and you commit another crime with those exact same clothes on, same hairstyle, same mustache, or what have you, they will recognize you even with a mask on because from the sheer fact that you look exactly the same as the last time you had a bounty on your head. Now, each area will have their own description of you from the last time you committed your crime. So if you commit a crime, say in St. Denis, and you go to Valentine in those same clothes, chances are they won't recognize you there. But if you committed a major crime in St. Denis and you go back in the same clothes you wore when you committed that crime, even if you pay off the bounty and you wear a mask during your next crime, you're going to instantly get a bounty. Now we're going to show this off in action. We're going to pay off the bounty we just got in St. Denis, and we're going to go back wearing the same clothes and commit a crime with a mask on. Now, since we murdered a bunch of people last time we were here, the citizens are going to remember what we looked like for a very long time, even though we paid off the bounty. So I have a mask on. There was a witness to this unarmed assault, and we're going to instantly get a bounty. We got a bounty for Arthur Morgan, and now we have to go pay that off to be able to basically walk around here freely. Now, knowing this system, we can freely go back into town to pay our bounty because we're wearing a different set of clothing and people don't recognize us as easily. So we've gone back into town with a new set of clothing. We're going to pay off the bounty we just got and commit another crime with a mask on. Be with you momentarily. Liberty is worth every penny. May I help you? Now that we've got the bounty paid off, we got to make sure we don't do this directly in front of the cops because if the cops see us, we will get a bounty. Now, let's go ahead and pick somebody. This guy looks like a good target right here. We're going to go ahead and put on our mask. Now, all of these people just recognized us in our other set of clothing. 
but you'll see that now that we look different and we don't match the description that was given in the previous bounty, we're able to beat up on some poor civilian and run away without getting a bounty. Now this works all the way across the board from robberies, train robberies, or anything that you could possibly want to do. So changing up your look, having different horses, changing your hairstyle and your mustache can really help you achieve success when committing any sort of crime in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now I hope this guide was useful for you and I highly recommend having a few sets of clothing, some that you rob towns with and others that allow you to walk around without being noticed. Definitely having multiple sets of clothing will make your life a lot easier in Red Dead Redemption 2 and I'm sure it will definitely help in Red Dead Redemption Online. So I hope you all enjoyed it, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and if you enjoyed the content and you feel like doing me a solid feel free to smash that like button as it really helps out. Now, if you're looking for awesome custom outfits, I am releasing every week Dapper Tags Guide to Looking Like a Baller in Red Dead Redemption 2. So feel free to check out that series if you want to rob like a boss.